cover the second commandment in the Decalogue, that is the Ten Commandments. The second commandment um, has traditionally been formulated as, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Um, this would be a rather short presentation, um, and even if you read through the Catechism entry on this second commandment, it is rather short as well. And so we use the kind of same setup that we did for the first commandment. Um, this is, um, unlike the first commandment, this is a prohibition. You shall not, uh, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. And as we discussed in the first, um, uh, with the first commandment, even though it's a prohibition, a, a negative, um, all laws which prohibit you from doing something uh, necessarily assume stuff that you should do, because all laws are for the common good. And so we have to kind of think, what is the common good that uh, this law is proposing? And um, if we can identify the common good, then we can propose positive things, that is, things we should do, um, kind of as the mere opposite, the other side of the coin, so to speak, of this law, which prohibits us from uh, doing certain things. Um, uh, the, the first thing is, um, if you're not going to take the Lord's name in vain because it's wrong, then it means, uh, on, the, on the flip side, you should respect the Lord's name. Um, the Lord's name uh, is uh, presented in Scripture as holy. Uh, we think of the episode with Moses in Egypt, who has fled Egypt because he has uh, killed uh, one of Pharaoh's soldiers, and God calls him um, and tells him to go back and free his people, and he asks God, what, what name should I tell them? Um, and God reveals his name, I am. Um, and that name in Scripture uh, would have never been pronounced by the Jews. Uh, it's called the Tetragrammaton. Anytime that name was ever uh, in Scripture, it was never read. It was always, uh, something else was always inserted. Um, so the, the, the ancient name of God that was revealed to Moses was something close to what we know as Yahweh. Um, but the, uh, the pious Jews would have said Adonai or Elohim or some other word referencing Lord or God, but they would never use that name because they had such a grand respect for it. They never wanted to come close to profaning it, so they simply never said it. Uh, likewise, for us, we, we, we should respect the Lord's name, um, and uh, we can see how there is a, a loss of that respect um, in the use of God's name, whether it be God, Jesus Christ, uh, Lord, uh, simply in, in vain speech. And what we mean by vain is we mean speech that does not reference God as God, right? If I use the term God and I'm not really, truly referencing the God of the universe, if I use the name Jesus Christ as an expletive as opposed to the reference to the, the God-man Jesus Christ, then I'm, I'm using language flippantly. Um, and I'm not respecting it. Um, along with that, uh, the church is always seen in this, um, in general, uh, a fostering of the sense or a respect for what is sacred. Um, if we're not going to, um, if we're not going to show any kind of respect for God's name, why would we show any kind of respect for anything else that might be holy or set apart for God? If there's one thing that's set apart for God, it must be his name. Um, but if we're not even going to respect his name, why would we respect his uh, church buildings that are offered to him? Sacred vessels like uh, the chalice or the paten or the altar, um, uh, sacred ministers, uh, why, why would we treat them any differently? Um, and so once we begin down the path of disrespecting God's name, uh, we begin down a path that leads ultimately to disrespecting anything um, uh, for the sense of the sacred. Um, which means uh, things that we shouldn't do would be along the lines of, first of all, the abuse of God's name, but not just God's name. Those to whom, um, those who belong to God. Um, so abuse of the name of God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, Mary, the saints. Um, the, Mary and the saints belong to God. They, they rest in, um, in the Godhead. They have achieved salvation, um, ultimate fulfillment in heaven. And therefore, they rest in God. And so abuse of their names as well um, would violate uh, this commandment because they have been called up into God himself. Um, blasphemy, 
which is a, sp a particular type of sin where we speak against God, um, would be to um, um, would be to violate uh, the holiness of God and His name. Uh, you have to understand that this. Um, while we tend to focus on the idea that it's just the name of God that um, is referenced in this, the the, the Jewish mentality was uh, much more significant. Uh, the name was the person. Uh, when you reference the name of someone, you reference the person, right? Um, there was no differentiation. Um, and so in, in invoking the name of the person, you invoked the person uh, physically and spiritually, whoever they be. And invoking the name of God, you invoked God himself um, and made God present. And so there was almost a, an, an equivalency between the name of a person and that person. The name made the person, the person made the name. And so to 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 disrespect the name of a person was indeed to simply disrespect the person. And so, um, so to blaspheme, to go against the person is the equivalent to go against the name of the person. And so that's why blasphemy is considered prohibited also based upon this uh, commandment. The use of God's name in magical incantations, we're definitely thinking here uh, outside of the realm of Christianity, um, forms of hybrid, um, voodoo-like, or other magical um, uh, magical processes or incantations which would use the names of deities or divinities um, uh, throughout the world uh, for some magical use uh, would be prohibited as well. That would be to use uh, the name of God vainly. Also, um, heavily used in, in ancient times, especially during the time of the Jews, would be to call upon the name of God or God as as witness to testimony. And we still do this in our court of law when we, um, uh, when we are allowed to put our hand on the Bible and swear that everything we are going to say is the truth. Um, perjury is a particular type of sin where we call upon God as witness to my fidelity to the fact that I'm going to tell the truth, but I, I intend not to tell the truth. I intend to break that promise and to, and to be false. So perjury is a specific type of, of sin where we call upon God to be witness to what we know is a lie. Um, and that goes against God's very nature. God is truth itself. Uh, and so to call upon God as, as witness to what we know will be a lie or perjury um, is to violate the second commandment. Uh, and, and finally, every person as a creature created by God, destined to rest in him, um, is called by name. Um, there's a, a great sense in salvation of the individuality of the person that is called, called to a community, called to the church, called to be saved within community, but at the same time, there is a very individualistic um, aspect of salvation in that God saves individual persons as well through the community. And indeed, we see this in the ritual of baptism when individuals are baptized into a given name. It's very important. The name is important. Um, and so that's why um, even if a child is being baptized at six months old or later on at 12 years old, um, it's part of the ritual is what name do you give this child? no matter how old, even as an adult in RCIA, um, when I uh, see uh, individuals baptized at the age of 55, they are, uh, it's asked, what name do you give this person? Uh, and the name is very important. Uh, and we see that in baptism and we see that in confirmation. Um, the name is important. Um, and in that case, because it's so built into the identity of that person saved through baptism, strengthened through confirmation, the respect of the very name of all persons is, is called upon by this because God created us as individuals and he saves us as individuals through a community uh, and we are named. We are saved in the name of Jesus Christ. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we are confirmed uh, in a given name. Name is very important. And so we must respect, we must not denigrate the name of any person created by God. And so therefore, built into this commandment is the respect for the name of all persons.